الحمد للہ رب العالمین وصل اللہ وسلم على نبینا محمد وعلى آلہ وصحبہ وسلم اما بعد توبہ اللہ عز و جل coming back to our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala and especially during this holy month of Ramadan this is one of the great acts of worship that we should all strive to do and it's not too late it's never too late to come back to Allah Azza wa Jal and especially during this holy month of Ramadan as we still have a few days left bi'idhnillah ta'ala and as it's mentioned in the hadith عن أبي موسى الأشعري رضي الله تعالى عنه عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال إن الله تعالى يبسط يده بالليل ليتوب مسي النهار ويبسط يده بالنهار ليتوب مسي الليل حتى تطلع الشمس من مغربها رواه مسلم Abi Musa al-Ash'ari radiyallahu ta'ala anhu said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam said Verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah the Almighty, extends his hand during the night to the person, to the sinner who repents the sinner from the day who repents. And he extends his hand during the day to the, rep the sinner of the night who repents. And this is the situation until the sun rises from the west. And this is collected in Sahih Muslim. This hadith of the Prophet وسلم, illustrates for us the importance of Tawbah إلى الله عز وجل. That coming back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one of the most important acts of worship that the slave can do. That it's a type of ibadah to Allah Azza wa Jal. And the time is now for Tawbah in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The scholars mention regarding Tawbah that Tawbah is the act of seeking repentance. And it's obligatory for every sin committed. And if the act of disobedience has occurred between the slave and Allah the Almighty, and it is not committed, or I mean it's not connected to the infringement of someone else's right, someone else's haq, then there are three conditions to be met. There are three shurut to be met of Tawbah. The first shart or condition of toba is that the individual discontinues the act of disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the act of sinfulness. So, for example, the person who masturbates, for example, that they fall into this sin, akramakum Allah, that they must stop doing this sin, this act of disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the first step of toba. The first condition of Toba in Allah. The second condition of Toba is that the individual feels sorrow. They regret that they did this sin. So, for example, in that same situation, the person who is tested with masturbation, that they stop masturbating. And meeting the second condition of Toba, they should feel sorrow that they do that. And this brings up the issue, Ayyu al-Muhabba, that 
Unfortunately, many of us are tested and our hearts become so hard that we feel no sorrow when we do sins. That we can boldly do sins knowing our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching us. And that shows that there's rana, there's, there's rana ala qulubina, that as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Mutafifin, bil rana ala qulubihim bima kanu yaksibun, that they, they have ran, they have a covering on their heart, a, 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 a covering, like a hijab on their heart. And that hijab, or that, that, that covering, that covers the heart doesn't allow for us to feel sorrow. Because as the Prophet ﷺ described that, that whenever a slave commits a sin, one of the slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commits a sin, that a dark spot goes on their heart. And when they commit more sin, more spots go uh, cover their heart until their heart becomes covered and it becomes a black solid black heart as if it is covered by soot you know the, the like black ash and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes in the Quran about those people whose heart is so hard like like a hedger like a rock or a stone and that when water falls upon that stone water is poured on the stone or rainfall or what have you it doesn't penetrate that but rather it bounces off that stone and does not penetrate it. And that's the case of a hard heart. A heart full of sin with no regret and no remorse to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The third condition of toba, of repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is that the individual resolves never to return to that sin to that action, that when a person, akramakum Allah, as we mentioned, the person tested with masturbation, that they have to resolve in their heart to never return to that action, to that sin of masturbating. And that implies that they must take the necessary steps, which is contained in those three conditions. And as we mentioned, the three conditions, they have to stop the act uh, of, of sinfulness, they have to regret that action, and they must resolve, make that determination, have sincerity to not return to that action. But if, for example, the person that is tested with these this sin, that they return to that action after all of that, Bi'idnillah, their toba was accepted, but maybe due to circumstances outside of their control, they fell into that sin again. But they took the necessary steps. If they take those necessarily necessary steps, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive them. And it's an accepted, sincere repentance. But perhaps as a shaitan is haris, they could get knocked off the path. The shaitan is ever present and ever willing to distort and distract and deviate, cause us to deviate from the path of the Sirat al-Mustaqeem. And as I mentioned, that something that's implied or is implicit in those three conditions is that a person removes themselves from the environment which causes him to do that sin. So with the state situation of masturbation, for sure you would not do this action out in public in front of the people. But you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching you and you have no shame and you do it in front of Allah. Tabarak wa ta'ala. He sees everything that we do. And may Allah forgive us for all of our sins. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. So taking steps to remove yourself from that environment, being alone less, if that's the case, Making sure you cut off the path. Do not even go close to, to zina by lowering your gaze, not watching the muharramat. And this brings up another sin that many of us are tested with in, uh, in the world, and that's pornography. Because it's so readily available. 
every home can get it, especially if they have the internet. And it, it, it goes in accordance with our desires. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created with us with desires. He created us with nat natural inclination toward one another, toward the men, towards the women, that we are attracted to women. And the women are attracted to men. This is the fitrah. This is the natural state. But when deviance overtakes us, and when our desires overtakes us, then we get into the muharramat, those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited. And that's where the pornography comes in because it allows for us and it stimulates us in ways in accordance with our desires, so much so that our desires over, overtake us and overwhelm us. And I spoke to a Muslim counselor, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve him, and he was mentioning that all addictions, whether it be drug or whether it be uh, like pornography and other types of addiction, that there are there's a chemical process in our brains that our brains are going through electrical stimulus and stimuli that are being activated in our brain so that it becomes to where we're convincing our brain that we need this. So the person addicted to pornography, which then in turn requires action, which is masturbation and then adultery and fornication more than likely, that they're, they're being convinced inside of their brain that they need to do this. They're stimulated. This is how the addiction works. وَعِيَادِ بِاللَّهِ May Allah protect us from that. So that shows us the danger of those type of sins. And that we have to take necessary steps to remove ourselves from those environments by not being alone, by putting protections on our computers to keep us from going to those sites, by also not being alone when we're using the internet if that's the case, and whatever other necessary steps and of course, taqwa azza wa jal, trying your best to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If the sin involves the right of others, then there's another necessary step regarding tawbah. So we mentioned the first step, the first condition is that a person stops the act of sin sinfulness. The second condition is that they should feel shame or and regret from that and sorrow from that action. And the third condition is that they should resolve never to return to that action. The fourth condition, if it involves the right of someone else, is that you should return their right. And let's look at a couple of examples. If it is that you're backbiting and slandering someone, then you should seek their forgiveness. You should go to that person and say, I've, I've uh, transgressed against you. Please Forgive me. And that's a very difficult thing for us to admit and do that. And may Allah forgive us and help us to be better servants of his. Ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. And if it involves stealing or taking their right, that you must return that. So for example, you stole someone's iPod or their iPad or whatever, then you should return that to them and seek their forgiveness. That is the other necessary condition that must be in place regarding those uh, regarding Tawbah and repenting to Allah. So we mention, if it is the right of someone else, then it needs four, meets the four conditions. That you stop that sin, that you regret that sin, that you resolve never to return that to that sin, and that you return that right of that individual. These are the necessary steps of repentance. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to be of the tawabin, those people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves and who return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala often. And as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, Kulu ibn Adam khatta wa khayran khatta'in tawabun, that all the children of Adam, they sin, and the best of those sinners is those who repent. So rush to repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seek his forgiveness and mercy, and especially during this last part of Ramadan. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.